For the last few months, the Fujifilm X100V has been the hottest compact camera in the world. Fujifilm Japan have officially stopped taking orders and you'd be hard pressed to find the camera in any retail store. On the second hand marketplace, on things like Facebook Marketplace and eBay, the cameras are going for well in excess of their original retail value, with hundreds or thousands of photographers keen to get their hands on one, thanks to their newfound popularity through apps like TikTok. Now I bought my X100V a couple of years ago when they first came out and with COVID I've been sort of shooting a lot more around my local suburbs. I've been shooting a lot more film as you probably know if you've watched my channel before. So when I saw that the X100V was having a surge in popularity, I kind of thought to myself, hey, I've actually got one of those at home somewhere gathering dust. I should really get it out and make better use of it. So I've put the camera back into my regular rotation now and it feels like an old friend is back. In December last year, I went on a work trip down to Australia's capital city of Canberra. Now Canberra has a rather unfair reputation of being one of the most boring cities in Australia, but I've always found plenty to see and do in Canberra and plenty of things to photograph. And if you'd like proof of that, check out these other two videos on my channel, Rico R1 Two Roll Review and 24 Hour Polaroid Challenge. So before my trip to Canberra, I got prepared by going onto the Fuji X weekly website. This is a fantastic site with dozens of different film recipes for your Fujifilm X series cameras. I had a look through all the recipes there and I chose three that I wanted to shoot while I was in Canberra. So I've never actually shot Kodachrome, the, the film Kodachrome, so I chose a Kodachrome 64 recipe. Then I chose a portrait one. I wasn't particularly convinced that the portrait images uh, on the website looked like portrait, but still I chose a portrait 400 recipe. And for the last one, I chose Ultramax, mainly because I really like the sample photos on the Ultramax 400 film recipe. So it's pretty easy to program these recipes into your Fujifilm X-Series camera. There are details on the Fuji X Weekly website as well if you've never done it before. So that part's easy. What isn't easy for me is choosing between the three sims. So when you're out and about and just say you want to take the same scene but you want to shoot it with three different custom film simulations, that's where it gets really annoying. You have to press the Q button choose a different film sim, take a photo, press the Q button again, choose another film sim. So it's really, I find that quite annoying. And given that Fujifilm have known for years and years how popular these custom film simulations are, I find it quite interesting that they've never actually improved the firmware of the cameras to make it easier for us to do this. For example, if you're shooting with Fujifilm's own recipes in the camera, things like Provia, Astia, Velvia, you can actually film sim bracket. So you can take one photo and it will apply three different of Fujifilm's film looks to those JPEGs. However, if you're using your own custom ones, you can't bracket, which is really annoying. So now I'm gonna talk you through seven sets of pictures. These were as close as I could get to being identical. Bearing in mind that between each photo, I had to press the Q button and change the film sim. So some of the framing isn't quite perfect, but I did my best. Now for each set of photos, I'm gonna start with Kodachrome 64, then we'll go to the Portrait 400 one, and then finally to the Ultramax 400. And then on the final screen, you'll see all three together. So you can sort of get a feel for them. Now at the end of these seven sets of photos, I've actually taken a few more photos with my favorite film sim around Canberra. I'm not gonna tell you which one that is just yet, but quite early on, I decided which one I liked the best, and I took quite a few other photos with that film sim. So the first photo was while I was on the plane from Brisbane down to Canberra. It was a beautiful sunny day. I had my camera with me, and so I had it at the ready. Now some dude was actually sitting in my window seat, so I had to politely ask him to move back to his seat. So I got the window seat, and one of the first photos I took on the trip was this shot here, looking out the window. Look at that beautiful blue sky. You've got the clouds there, and you've got the wing of the aircraft. I really love this. This is Kodachrome 64. The portrait one actually looks quite similar, a little bit darker there in the sky. And then you've got the Ultramax one there. The blues just look a little bit more lighter and richer, those blues. So yeah, the Ultramax one is my favorite for that first photo. 
The next one is down when I was in Canberra, went out with some work colleagues and we ended up in a nightclub and this nightclub is called 88 miles per hour and it was in like an 80s themed sort of nightclub. Most of the music they were playing was 80s, some was actually 70s and some was 90s but hey most of it was 80s so we'll let them off and just at the entrance of this nightclub is this amazing neon sign and what makes the neon sign even better is you've got these tiles on the left and you get the reflection of the neon sign in the tiles. I love it. So I took three photos here. The first one is Kodachrome, second one is Portra, and the third one is the Ultramax. It's interesting, I really like the Kodachrome one the best here. I think the colors look the best. Very sort of pastel-y look here at night. So yeah, really interesting photos. Uh, I think I prefer probably the Kodachrome one. The next image is the next morning. I was out and about walking around trying to get a coffee and there's this beautiful, I think it's an apartment building here in Canberra and it's got all this greenery on the outside. It's very, very cool looking. So yeah, you've got the, the Kodachrome one there and then the Portra and then the Ultramax. I think probably the nicest one, I'm not sure, probably the Ultramax one. I just like the colors, the blue colors in the Ultramax here. Probably could have done with a tiny bit more exposure on some of these, but these are the JPEGs straight out of camera. The next image is a really interesting building. I think it's like from 1959. It's called the Shine Dome, I think it's called. And it's this old sort of uh, round building, round dome, where they have sort of different events and stuff like that. So I've actually got two photos of this. So this one is quite up close and you can sort of see there's some water there and this really unique looking building. So that's the Kodachrome one there. And then you've got the Portra one, which is a bit lighter there in the sky. And third of all, you've got the Ultramax 400 one. I'm not sure which one I really like of those. Um, probably the, the Kodachrome or perhaps the Ultramax, but they're all very similar. And then here is the Shine Dome from a different angle, sort of right in front of it, seeing the whole building or most of the building. And yeah, three different images there. I probably, again, I probably like the Ultramax one the best there just because the sky is a little bit more blue and lighter in that one. If you're enjoying this video, I would really appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below. And if that subscribe button down below is still red, you know what to do, give it a tap and subscribe to Matt Loves Cameras. If you really love my content, there are two other ways that you can help me out by keeping the channel running. You can buy me a coffee on ko-fi.com or you can give me a super thanks here in YouTube. Also make sure that you subscribe to my new weekly photography email. It's mattlovescameras.substack.com. Now we're at the National Museum of Australia. It's down on Lake Burley Griffin in Canberra. A very interesting place to have a look around on a Saturday morning. And this is just a scene here uh, on the museum. And I really like the way the sort of the, the the deck boards sort of reach into the rest of the museum there and you've got this kind of sculpture thing going over the top there. So three photos there in a row. I think probably either the Kodachrome or the Ultramax one is my favorite, but they're all kind of similar. Now one thing to notice is that the Kodachrome and the Portra ones through all of these sets of photos are very similar. So I probably wouldn't use both of these going forward. They're just kind of too similar for me. Uh, so Ultramax is definitely the one that looks a little bit different. The next image is inside the Museum of Australia and you have this beautiful car. It's a Holden. Is it an FJ Holden? I think that's what it is. Uh, I'm not too good with cars. All I know is it is a beautiful machine, Australian made car. Look at that with the caravan at the back. The first two, look, I don't think the white balance is correct on these photos. They look too yellowy sort of color cast. But the third one is definitely the best in my opinion, that Ultramax one. The colors look a lot more truer to life in the, with that indoor lighting. So there you go, there are seven sets of photos that I took in Canberra with three different film simulations. The Kodachrome, Portra 400, and the Ultramax 400. Which one was your favorite? I would love to hear in the comments. Now, I actually took a whole load of other photos with my favorite film sim. And as you might've guessed, it was the Ultramax 400. I really like the colors and the deep rich blues of the Ultramax 400. So I'll talk you through a few more photos I took with that film sim when I was out and about in Canberra. So I'm walking around at night here in Canberra. It's actually really weird in Canberra during the week. There's a lot of people in restaurants and bars, which yeah, you probably don't see that as often in other capital cities. Well, certainly in Brisbane, you don't see people, you know, people rammed in a restaurant on a Wednesday night. It's, it's a really odd thing. Um, but there's a lot of people walking around at night. It was really cool. So this one here is in the civic sort of area. I think it's called of Canberra. Sort of a nice scene there with some restaurants and fairy lights and some nice sort of art there on one of the shops. The next one is just a close up of one of the fairy lights. I'm a sucker for fairy lights, what can I say? Really like the colors of that one. 
The next one is a little bar, restaurant place where people were enjoying a nice evening and all of a sudden Matt Loves Cameras comes along and, and takes a photo of them. Uh, so you can see one of the gentlemen there in the window spied me taking a photo, but that's okay. But I really love the colors here and the reflections and the green lights. I think it looks really fantastic. The next one again is of these colored lights at night from a bar. Yeah, I really like this one. The sort of colors of this Ultramax 400 SIM are really nice. Another one here of another bar in a back street. I sort of wandered down this alleyway and all of a sudden there's this big pub bar like in the back, the back of buildings. It was really weird, but a really cool sort of uh, photo here. I think this is at ISO 6400. So it's pretty dark, but I think it's turned out quite nice. The next morning you've got these really nice rich flowers and lavender. This one's probably a little bit dark. Maybe I should have rode the exposure comp dial a little bit more and dialed it up a bit. But look at those colors, very rich and beautiful, vibrant oranges and purples and greens there. This is the National Film and Sound Archive. I uh, actually spent a very pleasant half an hour there on a Saturday morning, or probably 45 minutes, watching old sort of uh, movie reels of Australia in the 50s and 60s. So yeah, very cool place to hang out and uh, lovely looking building as well. And the last three photos were taken at the National Museum of Australia. So inside, I've got this nice photo here of these people looking at an exhibition. I really love the reflections here and the different lights, the natural light and also the artificial light. I really love that one. You've got this stairway, which was bright red. I don't know why it was just bright red. And you can sort of see in the background there, Lake Burley Griffin in the background. And this last one here, you've just got this shaft of light in one of the buildings, uh, which was really cool. It looks a little bit overexposed, that shaft of light, um, but it was very bright in comparison to the, the rest of the scene there. So that's it for my roundup of three different Fujifilm X-Series recipes that I used on my Fujifilm X100V on a trip to Canberra. Which ones were your favorite? I would love to hear, tell me in the comments. Also let me know what your favorite film recipes are for the X-Series cameras. Please tell me and I'll try and use some for future videos.